Hello, welcome to New Harvest Christian Fellowship, Manchester, England, and thank you for subscribing to our sermon podcast. The message you're about to hear was recorded live at one of our recent services. We pray it will be a blessing to your life, and if you'd like to get in touch with us, we'll give you our contact information at the end of the recording. Thank you once again. Enjoy the preaching. Why I was crying. God was doing something in my heart. And this is a place, exactly this place, I got married. And uh, this is the same place I'm preaching tonight. So get excited and uh, please take your seats. And absolutely, it's an honor and privilege to, to preach the word of God. I don't want to do anything more than this. This is, this is a, a privilege. I consider it as a, it's a great honor. I just thank uh, Pastor Tom and Sister Grace while they're in... Uh, in U.S. attending the conference, I just keep them in prayer and uh, thank you, Pastor Allen, for that great introduction. To be honest, I don't deserve that. Uh, so let's get on to it. Tomorrow is uh, Valentine's Day. Amen. Yeah. Love is in the air. Woo, woo. Uh, can you please turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 13? I'll read verses from 4 to 8. It says, Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps of no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Amen? Amen. Wow, that's a powerful scripture. Uh, a couple of weeks back, uh, Pastor Tom asked me if I could preach tonight. And I said, yes, sure, love to. It's an honor. And he said, okay, Manny, can you preach something related to love? Because it's Valentine's Day around the corner. And I thought, wow, I know a bit, a thing or two about love. And my beautiful wife giving me a little smirk there. Amen. And... Today is a special day for me, for us, because it's uh, unofficially, it's uh, our 15th year anniversary. The same day I uh, unofficially proposed my dear wife, amen. And most of the time, we associate love to be romantic. We like romantic love, right? Amen. But there are different kinds of love. There's love, husband and wife, Girlfriend, boyfriend, physical, sexual, men. But there are different kinds of love. The first love is called brotherly love. My dear brother, Vinny, is at the back. He's my bro. Amen? My brotherly love. So, there's a different chemistry there. He he understands what I... If I look at him, he understands. He understands me, you know, if I need something. That's a brotherly love. If he's... He needs something, I know what he needs. Amen? There's another love called filial love, which is friendship love. You know, we grew, grew up in, in schools, college, you know, everybody's friend, you know, cool. We try to help each other out, you know. If somebody gets into trouble, we take it because, hey, they are my friends. The another love is called stoje love, which is family love. Between father, mother, sister, brother, you know, we have that love. It's bonded, family love. Some people call it blood relationship, you know, that kind of love. Going a bit further, there's something called, uh, now it's practical love, which is called pragma love, which is founded on reason, okay? So what can I get from this brother? That kind of love. What can I get from the sister? What benefit will I get? 
if I treat them nice, if I care for them, or try to show them I love them. That's the reason, based on reason. There's another love called philanthropy love. According to me, this is the oldest, the second oldest form of love, which is self-love. Everybody loves the duvet, don't they? Like to sleep, amen? Yeah? Everybody likes to love themselves. That's in our instinct. I have a question tonight. Are you in love? Nobody? I think it's just me, right? <laughs> yeah? I'm in love. Can I hear amen if you're really in love? No, I, shall we do it once more? Amen. I, I'll go three, okay? One, two, three. Amen. amen. Yes. My first love, amen? Like I mentioned before, He loved me, cared for me, he gave his life for me. He's my first love. When I was alone, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know where I was going. I had no hope in my life. He was my first love. His name is Jesus of Nazareth. And he captivated me with his love. And I'm waiting for the day when I see him face to face. Amen. My second love, I mentioned before, my beautiful wife here. She's my second love. And uh, everybody loves a romantic story, don't they? I got loads of them, amen, with my beautiful wife here. So I was, uh, I was doing something at the back. I was an usher back in the day. And uh, I looked at her and said, um, not exactly the same words. I said, I'm going to change your surname. <laughs> what do you think about Bethany and Glory? She, she smiled. Yeah, right. Said, if I hold your hand, I will never let it go. Till my last breath. There you go, 15 years. Amen. But there was many ups and downs in our lives. There were many ups and downs. But she didn't let, her, let me go as well. She's a strong lady there. But let me tell you, there's another love which is far more above, beyond, greater than that love. Amen. When, when we are in love, we need to hate. Come on, man, you're spoiling the party now. Everybody's in a good mood. We're talking about love, it's romance, you know, everything's, you know, great. But it's true. When we are in love, we need to hate. What are you talking about? Let me take you to Proverbs 6.16. It says, there are six things God hates, like a proud look, lying tongue, so on and so forth. In Ecclesiastic 3, 7 to 8, it says, a time to love, time to hate. I would like to uh, kind of um, turn it, and I would like to say in my words, it's things to hate and things to love. There are definitely things to hate. Like what? Hate what is sinful. Amen? We like to talk about love, but we don't want to talk about things we should hate or things we shouldn't love. Hebrew 1.9, it says, You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. We need to hate what is unrighteous before God. Amen? That's the other side of love, other side of coin. We need to hate what is selfishness. Hate what keeps us in bondage. Man. Hate to be mediocre. Same, same stuff, same things, you know, in our spiritual lives, in our normal family lives. We need to grow. We need to hate things which hold us back, which 
pulls us back. We need to hate to see others go back. Amen? We should be passionate about God, about our faith. Can I hear amen? Amen. Amen. I'm going to move on to my next point. This, my next point is, when we are in love, this is very important. Personally, in my life, in my testimony, the testimony, what I've heard, is when we are in love, we need to hold. Amen? Because if we think we are in love, everything will be okay, you're naive. Because there might be things you need to hold. Amen? You need to hold to protect yourself. You need to hold to protect the ones you love. First, we need to hold our faith. Like I mentioned before, we need to live a righteous life. Without us living a righteous life, we can't help other people. We can't help our families. Amen? Psalms 97.10, it says, You who love the Lord hate evil. Amen? Who you love the Lord hate evil. Proverbs 13.5 says, A righteous man hates falsehood. What's sinful? Amen? Why? Because you love God. You can't love God and love sin or what's not righteous. If you don't live a righteous life, you can't hold others. Amen. That is why it's very important. And it is very, very important that we take this very seriously. Because it says in the word, you have power of life and death. Amen. We only look at life, but don't look at death. If you don't do what's right, that's the option. You have to choose. You can't choose both. You can either choose only one. Amen. Excuse me. Just a sip of water. Thank you. I'm trying to do my best, church. Amen. 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 Before going on to the next point, I would like to say this. You are important. You are important. Why? Because you matter to us as a church. You matter to God. No doubt about it. Amen. When you are in love, we need to hold. We need to hold our families. If you see that picture down there, the picture one before, the soldier is holding on. Amen? He's holding on and not letting it go. Even if he sees the enemy charging in front of him, he's holding on. He's not throwing his stuff away and say, you know what, my family, defend yourself and he's going to run. No, they don't, do they? Even they see that hundreds of people, hundreds of soldiers, they hold on. They don't let it go. We need to hold our forts. Amen? We need to hold our family. How can you hold your family? Amen? For praying. Praying for them. Amen? We hold our family by taking care of them, meeting their every need above and beyond. And we all do that as Christians. I believe we do. We make sure, even when we are gone, we leave a gift, a thing or two, so that they're taken care of. Parents, we like to guide our children in the right path. We try to protect them. We defend them from danger. We hold them. Amen? Because we're in love with them. The next point I would like to say is, when we are in love, we hold. We hold what's dear to us. That's our church and our fellowship. Amen? We hold on even if you know that 
all the people who are supposed to help you are gone. You're the only person standing there, holding the gates. But you still hold on. You don't let it go. Why? Because it matters to us. You hold on when you even know that the enemy is right in front of you, staring at you. And you can't do it alone, but you still hold on. What I'm talking about? I'm talking about a spiritual battle. I'd like to challenge you tonight, if I may. Will you hold on? Will you hold your pastors in your prayer? Amen. The brothers and sisters who you love know that they're going through hard times, or you see them every time coming down to the prayer request and praying for something, and you know what they're praying for. I'd like to challenge you tonight. Will you hold down, hold them in your prayers? What really matters is how much time you spend on your knees. I'm not talking about we moved on now. I'm not talking about you or your family. I'm talking about your brothers and sisters and your church and your pastors and your fellowship. If it really matters to you, and I believe it does matter to us, all of you, because this is a hardcore service. This is Wednesday service. Amen? Lastly, I would like to move on. We hold the kingdom of God. Amen? We lift his name high. We lift the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And we stand for what we believe in. Even at workplace, even in school, even in universities, we hold on. Amen? We don't compromise. If somebody says, hey, why do you pray before you eat? We're all sitting here. Or somebody smiles or laughs at you. Because are you tempted to compromise, to hold on? Or just, just one, one second prayer? Thank you, Lord. Or is it just me doing that back in the day? <laughs> Maybe me. Okay. Uh, or are you ashamed to stand up when somebody asks you a question? Is there any Christian here? Or somebody makes a vague comment. You, you stand up. Not to offend them, not to have a fight with them. But you stand up and say, hey, I'm Christian and I believe in that. Do you hold on to your beliefs? It's, it's, it's a hard thing because it's hard to hold. Amen? It's really hard to hold because when you're holding there, you're not going anywhere. Trust me. You're there for years. You're holding on. Amen? But you matter. You do matter. Nowadays, everybody wants to run, okay? Leader, hold on. I'm going to run. Right? Or, leader, you hold on, I'm going to be at the back. But the person, the soldier who holds on, will hear the command of his leader, what he wants. Amen? Amen. He does hold on. That's what he does. Until the fight is finished. Because the person who we serve never loses. Amen? Amen? So how do we hold on our church and what we believe in? Amen? Let me ask you a question, or else I'll put it this way. I'll ask my dear wife a question. Darling, what's, what's dinner for tonight? That's my lovely wife uh, smirking again at me. Uh, I think I'm in trouble tonight. Amen. I'm in trouble, but it's okay. Uh, that's my favorite question, one of my favorite questions, not the favorite question, because I'll be in trouble again. So, amen. amen. <laughs> you know what? Sometimes we need to hold 
our pleasures, worldly desires for the kingdom of God. Sometimes we need to fast and pray. God has given you strength and good health. All the blessings in this world, you have roof to live, food to eat. It means something if you are a believer. We need to hold on to the, hold on the kingdom of God by fasting and prayer, having the personal relationship, a deeper relationship with Christ, especially for others, for our brothers and sisters he need, who needed a little bit of help, especially in our church, in our fellowship. This is how you show your love to God. This is how you show that you are truly in love with the one above and the one around you. I was thinking a bit about love. And I have failed, to be honest, to say, because you can't express love in words. Sometimes words become blurry. It, it, you can't really justify it. I like to put it this way. I was praying about it. Lord, what, what should I, what's my kind of exp- expression of your love? I can, I can say it this way. When a baby is born, the baby has this kind of uh, attachment to the mother. And no matter what happens, the baby wants to be in the presence of her mom or dad, especially mom. Good example is, is my beautiful Pearl. And she likes to be with Beth, no matter what. If she's in Shava, if she's somewhere else, she wants to be there. No matter what, she doesn't care. She wants to be in the presence of her mom. And that's a passion you should have in your heart. Love for God. When, you, when you're on, in that place, you are in love. Trust me, you are in love. And God will reveal himself to you and I. Amen. And oh, by the way, I forgot to mention something called agape love. That's God's selfless, sacrificial, unconditional love. The purest form of love. You might have heard a faith like child. I like to put it this way. Love like a child. The Bible says in 1 John, 1 John 4.10, it says, This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. You can have that love tonight by accepting Christ, Jesus Christ, into your personal life. If you have never known Christ in your life, I would like to open these altars and you can just come down and pray or raise your hand. Somebody will come and pray with you. Or... If you want that love, if you feel that you, you actually miss that love, or there's a distance between you and God tonight, you are in love, but you're not in that place, then I, I like to open this altar for you. The altar is open. You can come and pray if you want. And I would like to close with this. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have an eternal life. God loves you so much tonight. God really loves you. It doesn't really matter if you have somebody who loves you or somebody who doesn't love you. It doesn't really matter. Because the person who is so important loves you. And you have hope. Amen? Because his love doesn't change. People love change. He changes, really, drastically. And he loves you dearly. And tomorrow it's Valentine's. Talk to God. I would say talk to God and say how much you love him. Don't expect anything from him. Show, give him back the agape love, what he's giving us every day, just for one day tomorrow, okay? And let's close in prayer. Father God, I just thank you, Lord for this opportunity you have given us, Father God. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for your agape love, Lord. Lord, thank you for loving us so much, Father God. Lord, bless your people, Lord. Show them your pure love, Father God, because your love is pure, Lord.
give us that heart, Father God, to seek you and to know you and to love you, Lord, unconditionally, Father God. Not what we want, Lord, but what you are. You died for us, Father God. You bore all that pain for us, Father God. Lord Jesus, I pray, Lord, give us the strength, Lord, to run this race faithfully, Father God. One day we see you, Father God, face to face and not be ashamed, Lord. Do, Father God, give us strength, Lord, to the best of our ability, Father God. To do something, Father God, for your kingdom, Lord. Save souls, Lord. Build your kingdom, Lord. Build this church, Lord. Build our fellowship, Lord. Build each and every one, Father God. I just pray, Lord, your perfect will be done. Now, but brother, dear, dear brothers and sisters, lives, Father God, tonight, Lord, do something special, Lord. I also pray for people who are listening to this podcast, Lord. Touch them, Lord. Comfort them, Lord. Answer their prayers, Lord. Let them know, Father God, you're there for them, Lord. You love them, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you've been blessed or challenged by today's preaching and you'd like to get in touch with us, the easiest way is via our website at www.newharvestuk.com. You can email us at info at newharvestuk.com or look us up on Facebook or Twitter. You can call us on 0161 278 6305 or you can even write to us at 194 Chapel Street, Salford, Manchester, M3 6BY. We'd also like to extend a warm welcome for you to join us at any of our services. However you might be feeling and whatever you might have been told, know this. God loves you and there's a place for you in his kingdom. God bless you. We're praying for you. And once again, thank you for listening.